The Snake Pit with Jake Roberts, where he has a new set. The set is new. Let's bring out the old. Let's bring out Roddy Piper. You know what's funny is uh, I don't think the set was new. It's I, exactly it's like it's every single time. Yeah. And he's got he's got the snake there in the in the middle of the ring. And well, the stone ring. Well, yeah. whatever the hell the thing's called. Yeah. The stone circle. And he introduces his guest, and Roddy Piper kind of peeks his head out, and he and he slowly like kind of sneaks his way kind of a little bit into view. And then Roddy Piper, who at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, he's a top baby face. Yeah. He is fucking petrified of this snake. Yeah, sure. He will not go near the snake. He's scared shitless. He's a giant coward. Yeah. And Jake's trying to get him to get close to the snake, and he will not get close to the snake. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, huh, how about that? He wouldn't even go around Lanny Puff. No, it was very weird. Yeah. Terrible, Craig. Terrible, man. So he's very scared. Doesn't want. To, doesn't like snakes. He never gets close to the snake, as you noted. But more to the point, he never comes off the top step either. So the entire promo, you never realize he's actually shorter than Jake Roberts. He's always uh, a little bit taller. Hmm. Yeah, clever trick there, this rod, this, uh, this piper. So they go back and forth, come see the snake. I don't want to see the snake. And finally, Jake turns his back to pick up the snake, and Roddy puts his boot in Jake's ass, pushes him forward over the snake. Jake is outraged, grabs the snake, and says, Come here! And Roddy leaves, and Jake turns in fury and fucking body slams the snake. Oh, yeah. my God. He First, he landed on the snake, and then he fucking throws the snake. The mm-hmm. snake's head, bang, bounces oh off God. the cement. I was like, Jesus. That was horrifying and appalling. Yeah. yeah. That was that. Yeah. Yeah. Did not like seeing Jake handle a snake. No. Barry O and Tiger Chung Lee versus the Rougeos. So in this match, yeah, you remember that, um, oh man, what was the match? Gotta really think about this. I think it was Will Ospreay and Daniel Bryan. Guys, remember that match? It was Sunday. Mm. Probably the best match ever in the history of this country. I watched a lot of shows this weekend. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, these guys are doing that match on Sunday, and the crowd's going fucking nuts for everything. But at one point, they did a spot where, like, Osprey hits the ropes, and then he turns backwards, and Danielson ducks, and Osprey goes onto his back, and Danielson stands up, and he backdrops and lands on his feet. Okay? The place fucking went nuts for that spot. Absolutely crazy. And granted, you know, the way Osprey does it, he's incredible, but I'm watching this goddamn match, and Jacques Rougeau did the exact same spot. Yeah. He hits the ropes, he turns backwards, he rolls onto the back, guy stands up, he flips over, lands on his feet, and like, there's no reaction whatsoever, except way in the back, you can see about five fans go, that was some great athleticism. I was like, my God, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Jacques Rougeau doing that exact same spot in 1986. You've talked about this match longer than it actually went. Yeah. yeah. Dino Bravo said the Rougeau's making him sick to his stomach in the inset promo, and the Rougeau's won with the flying tea bag. Jack Tunney issues a statement, the WWF Championship Committee is investigating Danny Davis and his ability to referee. Huh. Interesting. Ricky Steamboat versus Moondog Rex, or as Gorilla called him, Big Rex Moondog. <laughs> they went like a minute. Steamboat won with a victory roll. This show sucks. Zero. Oh, come on. It was all right. It's yeah, good to it's see true. old Rex. Moondog Rex. Everything is so short on the show. It's just a waste of time. Why bother? Because you got to see the stars, dude. I don't feel like people tuned in to see Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for that, sixty seconds. Meet that Moon Dog. I feel like yeah, they're just there just to have the next week on video. <laughs> did you not like the show, Vinny? I really didn't actually. Really, I, I enjoyed the show. Yeah, I didn't I, hate I did it, too. but it was like it was a, a whole bunch of this was so sh- this was so short. Why did you waste my time? This Even guy here on. ended up being the first uh, demolition smash. He did, yeah. yeah. Demolition hmm. Smash for three days. Not too recognized. Oh. Yep. They, they, it was. Everyone said chanted Moondog, yeah. so they got rid of him. Yeah. Sucks to be that guy. It does. It does. Resnick interviews the Dream Team. Okay, this was awesome. This oh my, is my God. favorite thing on the show. Seriously, yeah. has there ever in the history of wrestling been a better Greg Valentine promo? No. I can't. I, I didn't even think he could cut a promo. <laughs> 
I've only ever seen him quietly mumbling his way through a promo. This fucking guy, I don't know what happened. Like, maybe he was on drugs. Whatever no, it was. On, I, I mean, even, fuck. Come on now. I, I advocated after I watched his promo. This guy was fucking out of his mind. It was the best promo I've ever heard him cut by millions of miles. And, uh, you know, what did he call Beefcake? Beefer? Beefer. Yeah. I think he called him Beefer. Beefer. Yeah. That made Beefer. the whole thing even so the, better. The, the, the whole thing, it, the reason it worked so well, besides the fact that Valentine's promo was just awesome anyway, as he's ranting and raving and And spitting, he is ranting. Yeah, this guy's pissed off. It's like he saw a small hammer in a Hell in a Cell match. Yes, yes. Meanwhile, Brutus Beefcake steps in. He's got sunglasses. And he just stands there stoic frozen he's the terminator he just stands there the entire time i'm not sure he was breathing in and out i i did he notice, was probably in awe i i did notice that uh the hammer popped him a couple times and he got just a smirk on his face just for a second and then went back to uh being stern probably popped over being called beefer <laughs> i'm pretty sure in the the dark side of the ring on the beefer that is that was just his nickname like they called him that behind the scenes and stuff because I recall like Jimmy Hart and these guys just calling him Beefer when they're talking about. Why him. the hell wasn't that his ring name? The Beefer. <laughs> the Beefer. Vinny, you got to come back. If we do the rural <laughs> revitalization match, you need to be Vinny the Beefer Verhai. Counterpoint. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's no counterpoint. So Valentine says, first of all, we're not leaving the WWF. The only place to go from here is down. Bulldogs, you robbed us of the tag titles with two referees and Ozzy Osbourne. But now we're training harder. This is six months later, by the way. He's ranting about mm. this. We're the dream team. We've got dolls made of us. That's right. Never mind they made in the entire roster. Yeah, you mentioned you could go across the street. I can't remember what story he said. Some grocery S store? Something drugs or Kmart. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Beefer laughed. Okay, I missed yeah. that. Can you Now, the, keep in mind, he's very clear. These are only dolls. Can you imagine having a real beefcake? Or a real Valentine in the room. A real beefer. Yeah. The Bulldogs don't want us in the living room. I'm like, fuck, I don't either. We went on a world tour, went to Australia, visited Aborigines, crawled on our hands and knees, <laughs> made fire with sticks. Now Excuse we're, me, what? That's what he said. They yeah. made fire with sticks? That's what he said. Yeah. Now we're back Is that for on our an episode of Leave it to Beefer? I stole that from the chat. Uh, what a skit that would have been. Better than a goddamn drive through And the whole time I was looking at Beefcake, who's just there. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if he's deaf. I don't know if he was... I think it used to be a Taco Bell menu uh, item called the Beefer. Yeah. That was, that big, was Bell, a, big Bell Beefer. Yeah. Favorite, Excuse yeah. me, the Big Bell Beefer? That's what it was yes. called. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's No, they didn't call it that. They yes, did. It. <laughs> God. All right, well. Finish could be the Big Ball Beefer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means, but... Oh, okay. I don't want to find out. Next week, here's your advertised lineup. Harley Race, Coco Beware, The Honky Tonk Man, who's apparently still a baby face, and I'm not making this advertised main event matchup. Roddy Piper... Versus Big Bell Beefer. One-on-one -on -one against Mr. Fuji. No, yeah. it's not. Come on. Yeah, yeah. No. That's Stop. what I said. Yeah. And then, of course, your special musical review. The Bell yes. Beefer was a hamburger made out yeah. with all this taco stuff in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. That they brought it back horrible. to Taco Time. Taco Time Northwest. had a taco burger for a while. It's okay. No, they, they had it. Just taco like Time a had a Big ago. Bell Beefer? They Basically, had, yes. It was yes. a hamburger with, yeah. With but taco they didn't meat. call it that. No, they called no, it Taco it's Burger. It's not good. It's not good. Taco Meat all falls no out. No shit. It's not good. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.